Hey, what's up guys? So this video is just about why I personally am giving up the Metabone Speed Booster. Now, keep in mind, this is just for me. This is my personal opinion. This is why I'm doing it. And, you know, by all means, you know, if you are using it and loving it, I love this product. I've had it for a year, uh, a little over a year. I traveled with it. I did all kinds of stuff. It never stopped me from doing what I intended to do. So this is just my opinion and take it or leave it. Okay, so first to start off with, let's talk about why you would ever even want to use a speed booster. And I think the main and most obvious reason is you are coming from Canon or Nikon full frame and you want to adapt that glass to a micro four thirds camera or maybe a Sony E camera or something like that. And this is the easiest way to jump systems is to keep your same glass and have a new camera body. Now, that might sound great at first. That's what I did. Uh, my main reason for getting it was because I wasn't really sure about Micro Four Thirds yet. Um, I had some Canon EF glass, some uh, cine lenses, and I really liked those lenses and I wanted to use them on Micro Four Thirds. I saw myself as possibly wanting to upgrade later to maybe the new Sony a7S III or possibly something new that came out that was full frame, the new Panasonic camera, something like that. But recently, I decided to keep moving forward with Micro Four Thirds. So another reason you might wanna use a speed booster is because on Micro Four Thirds, there's not a lot of options for really, really fast zooms. You have a bunch of zooms that are around f2.8. Uh, Panasonic just released one that's f1.7. But if you pair this with a Sigma 18 to 35 or a 50 to 100, you basically get an effective aperture of f1.2, f1.3, somewhere around there. And that's like nothing you can get on any other native glass. And that's great for people that shoot a lot in low light, but they want that zoom range. So another reason you might want it is if you're a cinematographer and you use a lot of uh, cinema lenses or you're changing lenses back and forth, you might rent certain lenses. This gives you the ability to adapt Canon EF, which is a pretty widespread mount for cine lenses, and you can use this with your Micro Four Thirds no problem. Now, one of the kind of negative effects of using cine glass or full frame glass or even Super 35 glass with Micro Four Thirds is you're cropping into that glass, which basically narrows your field of view. It also requires you to use wider lenses with slower apertures to you know achieve that same field of view. So you end up getting less depth of field, you end up getting worse low light, but let's, let's get to that later, that's debatable. But it basically gives you closer to that Super 35 sensor size. It's actually, depending on the speed booster you get, this is the XL version, gives you something like a um, APS H size sensor, which is slightly bigger than Super 35. And what that does is it increases the sharpness of the lens and it reduces CA. You can go back and look at some of the tests that I've done between adapting uh, lenses without a speed booster and with, and it does increase your image quality when you're using the same glass on Micro Four Thirds. And lastly, one thing that is really good that a lot of people don't talk about is if you leave it on there all the time, you basically get protection for your sensor. You can take the lens on and off all day long and you really don't have to worry about anything getting to your sensor. Now it's not necessarily dust proof, so I wouldn't do this in like a sandstorm, but you do get protection from the elements slightly when you leave that speed booster on all the time. Now I'm making the speed booster sound great. I mean, you get to use full frame glass, you get to have more stops of light, you get protection for your sensor. It sounds amazing, why would I get rid of it? So as great as this sounds, there are some negatives to using a speed booster. One that almost everybody complains about is you pretty much lose reliable autofocus. I mean, it's basically unusable. I've tried several different lenses from the Canon 50 1.4 to the Sigma 18 to 35 
to the Canon 24 to 70. They all kind of suck at autofocus and even just picture autofocus, just pick a point and, and it just never makes it. Another thing is the speed booster itself, the glass element, while Metabones has a really good quality piece of glass in here, it can still increase some color craziness, some colors that aren't there when you don't have the speed booster on, and it can introduce a little bit more flare and glare. Uh, it's not that bad. It's not anything to worry about. It's a kind of an artistic thing whether you like it or not but it does kind of manipulate the glass a little bit now the biggest thing for me is that it increases the weight of your setup obviously you have to use full frame glass on a micro four thirds so your your lens is get bigger heavier and you're introducing the speed booster which is about i think 170 190 grams something like that it just increases weight to your setup i mean it's not exactly light there are some micro four thirds lenses that are lighter weight than this and lastly you lose weather sealing the metabone speed booster isn't weather sealed so if you take it out in the rain you're not exactly going to protect your camera or the sensor or the electronics inside. So that could be a big determining factor. Now, all that being said, why am I personally getting rid of it? And I think the main number one reason is to save weight. Full frame glass is heavier, it's bigger, takes up more space in your bag. The camera that I carry is heavier, the bag is heavier. Everything's just bigger and heavier. And the second most important reason is autofocus. Now, autofocus has never been super reliable for Micro Four Thirds, but Panasonic just kind of changed all of that recently. The new update is really good. I'm using autofocus right now. I hope that it doesn't screw it up, but it's been very reliable, especially with this Sigma 16 millimeter lens. But I totally think autofocus is completely usable now. Maybe not for a professional work environment, maybe not for cinematographers, but for YouTube stuff like this, for stuff that you can do retakes on, it's totally usable. I haven't really had many problems with it at all since the update. And another reason is I primarily use primes. I just enjoy primes better. I feel like they're higher quality. You get faster glass. They're better in low light. They're typically a little bit sharper. That's kind of a general statement. And I just like that kind of smaller, lighter setup. I have a few focal lengths that I use over and over and over again. And I, there's not really one zoom that can cover everything unless you get something that's really slow like an f3.5 to 5.6 or something like that those all-around zooms are just not what i'm looking for so i tend to go towards the really fast sharp great quality primes like these sigma 16 30 and 56 millimeters and using these i have not had any problems with low light and i can say that when you're comparing to the sigma 18 to 35 with a speed boost Booster, these Sigma native Micro Four Thirds lenses, even though they're only f1.4, they actually have about the same T-stops, maybe even slightly better, maybe about a, a third of a T-stop better, between a third and a sixth, something like that. But it's, it is slightly better sometimes. So I'm not losing any out on low light, not having any problems there. And I can tell you, these things are sharp. They're perfectly good i feel a lot better using them than the big sigma 18 to 35 and the focus is completely reliable in video and photos and i don't have any problems with with flaring or ghosting or anything like that and the last reason i'm getting rid of this is i've decided to go all in with micro four thirds i know that the craze right now is full frame full frame full frame everyone's going crazy about full frame but I am so in love with this Micro Four Thirds camera and I can't wait to see what comes out next. Even if nothing comes out for a while, I can't imagine needing anything else. And I mean, it's all about what you use. So I'm fully invested in Micro Four Thirds. I've decided to take the plunge. I love this system. I'm so happy with the lenses and the camera and everything about it that, you know, why not just go all in? I'm not sure if any full frame camera that comes out right now is really gonna 
be enough to make me switch. I mean, and the way that Micro Four Thirds cameras have been ahead on technology in pretty much everything except for ISO performance. Yeah, I just don't see a need for this anymore um, because I don't see myself upgrading to a full frame camera anytime soon. All right, guys. Well, I hope this was informative. I hope that this maybe helped a little bit. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below and I will talk to you later. Peace.